you just turn around and say, listen, here's my car, take it. Yes, absolutely. Do the police even care? The police are actually following a Range Rover and it's leaving their area and they had to turn around and say, sorry, this is not our area, we can't cover it, so we have to leave this car. Got Mark Rose from Tracker. He's the managing director of Tracker. For the criminal gangs, three years ago, we closed down two. Uh, two years ago, we closed down eight. Last year, we closed down 44. Wow, and this wow. year, we're up to 37. So, so you kind of have that thing, the more technology there is in a car, almost the easier it becomes once that hack is discovered to steal it. it. But perhaps more worrying is if they particularly do want that vehicle, they might come and find you uh, and ask politely for the code. And, and if the polite asking doesn't work in a position which you don't want to consider too carefully. Hi guys and welcome to the GVE podcast episode 6. Now uh, off the back of a podcast that we've done recently, we had so much interaction with our viewers about trackers. And so today we've got Mark Rose from Tracker. He's the managing director of Tracker, the vehicle tracking company. Uh, one of the best in the UK, if not the world. Um, nice to have you here. Mark. David, it's great to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, we've got George and Anthony. And we've got a lot of questions to ask you. We've, we got <laughs> slated quite a bit on our last video. Uh, that went viral, which was the VHF uh, signal. And we had a whole load of people saying a VHF signal uh, can be blocked as well and whatnot. And uh, so we're going to get on to that. But I think uh, let's um, initially start off with you introducing Tracker to us and our viewers. Okay. So, um, yeah, Tracker has been around for almost 30 years. It's our 30th birthday next month. Oh, wow. um, so we're the leading provider of stolen vehicle recovery in the UK. Um, interesting, my background actually is telecoms. So I was at Vodafone for 11 years, Cable and Wireless for seven years. Um, massive companies, Vodafone, 40 billion pound company, does a lot of things incredibly well. But you come to somewhere like Tracker, when I joined four years ago, it has two genuine unique selling points. One is the technology. We have a proprietary technology called VHF, which is very high frequency. Um, and we have that in our devices, uh, and that has some unique properties. So first of all, it's very difficult to jam. You could get military-grade equipment in order to try and jam it, but in order to jam it, you'd have to put a counter sequel, uh, sequence on the same frequency as the one that we have, uh, and then we'd be able to track that. And secondly, it can see into underground car parks, shipping containers, and heavily wooded areas, so it's not going to go dark. Okay. Um, the second unique we have, and it's probably just worth mentioning, is that we have a unique relationship with the police as well. So my predecessors had the, uh, the wisdom to build this relationship with the police. So we have a, a, a kind of a signed agreement, which I signed a couple of years ago for five years. That means we have our VHF kit in over 2,000 police cars and all the police helicopters. So if a vehicle gets stolen and it gets called into the police, they know it's not going to go dark, it's not going to get jammed. They've got our kit in their cars and therefore they prioritise going and getting in. And that's why we have such a, a strong recovery rate in terms of uh, the vehicles we get back, which is up at 96%. Wow, 96%. That's crazy. So that's the pitch out of the way anyway. Okay. <laughs> so I'm guessing like your major key point from this is you're, you're one of the sole tracker companies out there who have this technology to like the, military grade technology. We're the only tracking company that has VHF, it's proprietary to us. How, how did you come across that? Uh, uh, I mean, we're part of a, a broader group, but we have the patent on it um, from when Tracker was first set up and, and have done ever since. Well, VHF is very high frequency, so it's just a radio bandwidth. So we just have the, the patent on that particular frequency uh, and the proprietary ability to use that. How does Tracker differentiate themselves from other companies out there that we also use? So all of those companies will use GPS, GSM as the basic capability for their for their trackers if you go onto amazon um and i was looking today for eight pounds 79 you can get a device which you plug into your cigarette lighter adapter uh, which is a gps jammer and that will knock out that capability oh, wow. it disappears okay so then the key differentiator between tracker and these other companies is the fact that you have this patent over uh the vhf um technology and when uh 
a, a thief will use a jammer to block all the other signals, he can't actually block the VHF signal, which is contrary to probably like hundreds of messages that we received uh, yeah. when we done the last podcast. So the jammers won't be blocking the VHF signal. We'll also pick up the fact that somebody's trying to jam in and transmit the fact that that vehicle is being jammed uh, and that can go back to the police as well. So, so it's the VHF, the fact that we can get a signal out when there's a jammer in the vehicle, but then also the fact that the police have got our kit across 2,000 plus of their cars and all the police helicopters. Going back to when I worked for Aston, we used to work, use a, a other trackers, like Vodafone, for example. And every time we tried to activate that tracker for the customer, the first thing they would ask us to do is, could you move the car, make sure the car's outdoors um, so we can find, locate the car and activate the, the tracker for the, for the new keeper. And I always, I always found it funny that they couldn't find the car or locate the car if it was indoors or if it had a... a a tree on top of it or if it was yeah. in, in someone's wooden shed they, they wouldn't be able to find the car so am i right in saying with those other trackers unless they have the vhf if someone parked it in the underground car park they wouldn't be able to find the car is that correct that's correct right okay. generally if, if you can't get a gps signal or a gsm you know on your phone then you're not going to be able to see the tracker that's in there unless it's got vhf part of the kind of nature of the frequency that we use is that it can be seen in underground car parks right. and in shipping containers as well. In fact, the, the professional gangs have a term which they call soaking, or the police call it soaking, where somebody will steal a car, go and stick it in an underground car park. If it's not found within a day or a day and a half, they know it's safe. it hasn't got one of ours in it, so they can drive it around with a GPS jammer and, uh, uh, and it won't be found effectively. In, in this signal, I'm guessing for the end user... If they have an app, you've got an, you've got an app, right? Yeah. They, so so our, our higher end devices will have is. yeah. So we'll have VHF as well as GPS and GSM. So we can still track the car in the same way through GPS and GSM. And there's an app where you can see where your vehicle is, and you can put a geofence around it, and all the other sort of things you would expect to do. We get a download of every vehicle that's stolen on a daily basis from the police um, as part of the relationship we have with with the police. Got it. Um, if you look at trends over the last couple of years, overall. Back in 21, theft of cars went up by 22%. In 22, it went up by 25%. So overall, that's a 52.5% increase in car theft over the last two years, which is pretty dramatic, Huge. actually. Uh, if you look at some of those high-end luxury brands, Porsche mm -hmm. and Rolls-Royce, so if you take the first seven months of this year, yeah. uh, there have been the same number of thefts for Porsche and Rolls-Royce as there have been across the whole of last year. If you look at Bentley, that's 30% higher over the first seven months than over the high of last year. And Ferrari is 300% up in the first seven wow. months wow. over the last year. I'm, I'm sure that's right there because you never used to hear about Ferraris getting nicked, not in the it's UK all, anyway. Yeah, so it's just now. literally this year you've heard 20 or 30 done in the space of two weeks. Crazy. Just so all of a sudden. I guess, you know, as, as I say, the whole of car theft is carried out by orga organized criminal gangs so they will invest an awful lot like any other business in in their r d and their research and development uh you know that's one of the reasons why we see this huge number of range rovers being stolen because they're highly desirable vehicles they're worth a lot of money uh they will steal them to order they'll take them abroad or in some cases the range rovers they'll chop them up as well and sell them on for parts um so as soon as a new range rover comes out the thieves will get hold of one work how what the various systems are that the you know car manufacturers put in work out how to disable those that then goes out on the dark web and suddenly you see these cars being stolen so that's what would have happened with ferrari is that they would have found a hack wow. in order to get into it same with bentley's and so forth i mean would you so know is, sorry, go on. would you know as an example what some of these manufacturers do to deter potential thieves from taking these cars what what is factory standard security yeah, um, you know, uh, for example, Range Rover has invested very heavily in terms of their um, internal systems in order to try and get that. The One problem the is as soon as you've got cars. something which is um, kind of put in a, a point of manufacture, then it's very difficult to put it into lots of different positions at that point. So mm -hmm. uh, as soon as you've understood where it is, you know where it is in every other vehicle that has it in points of manufacture. Now, there will be some aftermarket fit that they're doing as well, but all of the stuff that we do, is aftermarket so you know it goes into vehicles 
after they've been sold. And then we'll have a whole variety of different places, obviously, which I won't discuss, uh, where we put those devices. Um, uh, uh, and that means that they're very difficult to find. So these manufacturers are installing trackers at factory, very similar to what you guys are doing, or is it different, completely different technology? Uh, well, it'll be GPS and GSM based, so they won't have any VHF based stuff. How does this work exactly? So let's say someone steals a car and it's got one of your tracker units in there. Is it a case that once the custom, once the client knows their car is stolen, they call the police and they automatically have access to the tracker? Or do um, they have to go through you? Uh, so we get them to call the police first, get a crime reference number. We have kind of implemented that because we found ourselves in the middle of various domestic situations where people have not called the police and just called us because, you know, that the husband's gone off in the car or, or whatever it might be. <laughs> so they get the crime reference number to make sure that it's a genuine then. theft. <laughs> <laughs> I can see I can see this may resonate here. It sounds no. 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 Sounds like something that might happen <laughs> to you. Resonate with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this uh. is gonna be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um so we get the crime reference number. Um they then phone us, uh, at which point we have a twenty four seven uh, secure operating sensor, which is, you know, flood proof, bomb proof, all the other things that you'd expect. Um, and through our official relationship with the police, um, we have contacts into all the various different police forces where we can phone up direct people in the traffic, uh, kind of uh, in the, the car theft areas in order to uh, deal direct so that they would immediately react mm. to the thefts as they come in. What we'll also do actually is we'll switch off the ability for people to see where their vehicles are at that point. Because the very last thing we want is for people to go and try and get right. their vehicles back themselves, themselves because that puts them into a situation which is genuinely dangerous. Mm. Yeah, That makes sense. Um, what are the stages of a car getting stolen and then what happens next, right? So uh, essentially, uh, you know, this thief comes, steals your car, where, uh, you mentioned that sometimes they put it in a car park. W what else do they do? And then I noticed uh, you mentioned that they sometimes end up at chop shops. So um, explain to the viewers what a chop shop is. Um, well, that's so in terms of why cars are stolen before coming out to chop shops. So, so there are there are four four things that generally they'll happen. They're stolen to order and re uh, kind of repurposed and used in the UK or sold on in the UK. Stolen to order and shipped abroad. Um, what we see is kind of an uh, increase in demand, especially from Russia at the moment, because we see that it's harder for vehicles to be exported to Russia with all the kind of and stuff that's going on at the moment. You know they're going to Russia because you, you can actually track the car going there? Uh, well, I mean, generally not, because we'll have got it back before it goes out of the country. But right. it is a kind of reasonably well recognised that answer. that's a route that's... <laughs> 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 yeah. For the ones that slip the yeah. net. It, it's, a, it's a standard route that goes out. Wow. Um, so stolen to order and shipped abroad. Uh, there'll also be vehicles which are stolen for carrying out other criminal enterprises. So, for example, running drugs or moving around stolen goods, but that tends to be lower end vehicles. So, you know, we've seen a spate of Vauxhall Corsa thefts. For right. example, Cash Guy was very popular at one point for that sort of activity. Incognito. Exactly. Okay. And then the other piece is uh, for a chop shop. So, a car is stolen. Um, maybe, you know, uh, taken to a chop shop where uh, they will literally chop it up for parts. But what they would have done is built an order book for those parts beforehand, very often through legitimate websites uh, where you're advertising certain parts. People buy those parts, and once they've built up a big enough book, uh, the organised gangs will have quite often a series of kind of relatively young kids who will get paid a couple of hundred quid to go and steal cars. They'll get given the equipment to go and steal those vehicles. Uh, and then they'll uh, kind of bring them back to the chop shop uh, uh, and those parts will then get distributed accordingly. Um, and then sold online? Uh, well, they've already have been sold. So the, the order will have been built, they'll already have been sold and then they just get fulfilled. I'm guessing these part numbers can't be traced back to the specific car because they're, they're generic parts, right? Generic parts, I mean, engines. We had a case recently of a chop shop that we closed down in Doncaster Um we got the car back, um, which had our tracker in it. We got eight other cars back, which didn't have our tracker in it, our trackers in them, but a couple of those had other trackers in. Um, 
But there was also a shipping container which had 37 engines in it, which was oh due to go out to Taiwan wow. the next day. And because there is very often a part number on an engine, if that's going out to Taiwan, then you know that's a different thing. So, so you're also involved in locating these chop chops. I'm, I'm, ge- I'm guessing because your trackers in the cars, because you actually help the police shut them down. So it'll be the police that go and go and shut them down. But exactly that. So each of these chop shots will have an industrial strength jammer in it. But because of our VHF capability, the police will still be able to see where our vehicles are. Um, but just to give you a view of how that side of the business has really grown for the criminal gangs, three years ago, we closed down two. Uh, two years ago, we closed down eight. Last year, we closed down 44. Wow. And this wow. year, we're up to 37 already are they all within a similar vicinity or just across the whole country um uh, you you get areas of them so uh east midlands there's a a, a kind of a, a band around there essex is very popular for chop shops and kent as well i guess that's because they're close to potentially taking them out of the country as well in those locations as well london is a hot spot and how long does it do you think it takes from I don't know if you know these facts, but from the minute that's that's a car gets stolen to the minute someone realizes the car is stolen, and then to the minute that car being found again, do you know roughly on average? For us, we get eighty percent of everything we get back within the first twenty four hours, and if we oh, do wow. that, it comes back undamaged. Wow. The other twenty uh, percent tends to be quite quick as well, um, uh, and you know a, a, there is a proportion of that which will come back damaged. Actually, th- that's a good point uh, that you mentioned about the damage. Um, you mentioned, well, I said to you, a ghost mobilizer should be fine, right? You know, you you have a certain code that you have to enter in on the system and, um, or, you know, on your uh, steering wheel or whatever, right? And um, so if they don't know that code, then in theory, they're not taking your car. It's, they're going to spend too long faffing about trying to uh, take that car. But you said, well, actually, yeah. it's not that simple, right? Yeah. I, I guess there are, there are a couple of things on that. First of all, we're seeing more and more hacks around the ghost or, or any immobilizers, actually. So um, increasingly, again, there's investment in being able to crack those. But if a thief can't and they want to get that particular car and they're not able to, then one of two things might happen. One, they get frustrated uh, and then do some damage to the car. We had a case recently with two Fiesta STs uh, up in Leeds uh, within half a mile of each other. One had one of our trackers in it, one had an immobiliser in it. They didn't steal the immobilised vehicle, but they did about eight grand's worth of damage because of the frustration of not being able to steal it. They stole our vehicle, but we got it back within 24 hours undamaged and, and it was fine on the back of it. But perhaps more worrying is if they particularly do want that vehicle, they might come and find you uh, and ask politely for the code to... Or not so politely. ...to get round that immobiliser. And and if the polite asking doesn't work, then, again, uh, you're kind of in a a position which you don't want to consider too carefully. So what's your advice for... Yeah, it's not the nicest thing to think about, right? But what's your advice to a customer of ours or you know any of our viewers that suddenly ha- are in that situation and providing they've got a tracker we're well, not even providing if they've got a tracker would you just turn around and say listen here's my car take it yes yeah absolutely uh, you know, if it was me certainly i would decide that um my physical well-being is probably more important to me than that vehicle at that point you know i, you I, I don't think you want to take the risk pretty interesting stories of these recoveries so you, you guys have an amazing recovery rate of stolen vehicles what what do you, can you recall any interesting stories where let's say the police themselves would have found the car and there could have been some thieves in there oh we've i mean i probably shouldn't say this actually because it will make us terribly unpopular but we've, we've we've closed down <laughs> the m25 a couple of times oh really um that was you <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was the oil protesters it, it was actually it was actually obviously the police that did it not us but they they've been tracking a stolen vehicle with particular uh, people of interest within those vehicles mm. and as a result of that have done a, a rolling close on the m25 in order to enable them to intercept that vehicle safely so uh, we've had a couple of those relatively recently um, I think our quickest recovery this year is 37 minutes. Wow. Um, you know, 
Uh, and because you know, thirty-seven I'll, minutes of the car being stolen, or thirty-seven minutes of being reported. Uh, well, of it being reported, but it, uh, you know, in that case, it was reported quickly because uh, obviously our higher-end devices, our S5 devices, have tags. So if a vehicle is driven off without the tags, it will send an alert saying, "I've been driven off without my tags. Have I been stolen?" So it immediately alerts the the owner to the fact that their car is not where it ought to be. So what do the tags do exactly? So exa- exactly that. They, they, they are Bluetooth enabled and uh, uh, there's some logic within the device within the car that says if the car starts and moves off without, that without tag. the tags being present, send a message. And where would you recommend the customers to leave those these tags? On the key rings or in their wallets? or? Uh, we tend to just put them uh, on, the, on the car keys. On the car keys? Yeah. Okay. Are you able to, so with, with some trackers, I'm not sure if this is the case with tracker, but are you able to monitor how the car's being driven? Uh, no. Okay. That's, that's not, we have a separate business uh, with the insurance companies where we provide devices and uh, kind of information for telematics insurance, which allows them to see how the vehicles are being driven and they do black box insurance, mm. particularly for, for kind of younger people who are looking to be insured on that basis. But when it comes to stolen vehicle recovery, Absolutely not. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think if certainly in, in your line of business as well, if you buy a supercar, you probably don't want somebody looking at how you're driving that car particularly. But these are things that customers ask us, right? Yeah. Sometimes they do get a bit paranoid or worried. No, 100% or 100% not. Okay. There's been some funny scenarios, actually. So you have a lot of valet parkers and um, they leave the car. I uh, won't say the name of the restaurant, but they leave it there. They'll go inside, and they'll check their phone and realise the car's been driven 80 miles an hour down the A14. It's like, hold on a second, it's a 40 mile an hour road. What's going on, what's going on there? Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can see where your car is at all, at all times and where it's been driven and the routes that it's been driven on and so forth. So, yes, if it's a uh, valet parking where they should just be putting it underground and they're yeah, two think, miles up the I road, then you know more something the hasn't quite happened. On the A40, not doing 80 miles an hour. <laughs> 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 so the good thing is that we've started installing them which yes. is great we've started st- uh, installing trackers and we we do our own bundle now as well so it comes with a tracker and there's an uh, additional device that you mentioned yeah we've got a nano device as well which is a, a, a supplementary device too um, which we can can add in a sort of a belt and the braces type thing that one actually is only GPS GSM enabled but again it's the size of a matchbox wakes up on a daily basis says have i been stolen if it has then it gets a message back saying start transmitting your location on a regular basis and, th- and then we can recover it and this nano device do you have to have it as well as or can you have it just on its own uh you can have it on its own uh, a- again we work with a number of insurance companies where on vehicles over thirty thousand pounds for example they will add that into the policy as standard okay. to give them a degree of cover it's obviously not as good as having one of our full vhf devices uh, but it still works pretty well. And that's, that's a good point, actually, going back to insurance. Yeah. Is, there a, is, is there a minimum value where insurers will then require to have a tracker? It depends on the insurer. So some, some insurance companies now will just specifically require your tracker to be fitted to the car rather than... That's right, yeah. Okay. You've got this sort of slightly counterintuitive thing whereby the more technology there is in a car, very often the easier it is to steal. We've seen a, a situation with Lexus... Um, RX 400s recently where the thieves found a hack where they could get into the CAN bus, the effectively electronic control unit of the car via the adaptive headlights. So they could go in under the wheel arch, get into the adaptive headlights clip onto the wires that go into the adaptive headlights that take them straight back in to the ECU um, knock out any stolen vehicle recovery systems uh, which a manufacturer put in open the doors and start the engine. And they, wow. you go online, you can see it. They, they've got videos of them doing that in 50 seconds really? without doing any damage to the vehicle. Um, so, so you kind of have that thing. The more technology there is in a car, almost the easier it becomes once that hack to is discovered to steal, to steal it. it. Interesting. On that basis, then, it should be quite easy to steal a Tesla, no? Um, it probably should be quite easy to steal a Tesla. Uh, but Teslas actually aren't kind of really high up on the theft li- list at the, m- at the yeah. moment. Probably yeah, not very on, desirable, right? right and limited <laughs> on parts, right? There's not many parts you can actually store from there apart from using one of the Teslas. Well, that's right. I mean, obviously, with electric vehicles coming in, the number of parts in an engine certainly has reduced dramatically. Do the police even care? 
So, you know, and, you know, we know customers and we've seen, uh, we've seen it with our own eyes where the customer's car's been stolen. He's mentioned it to the police that, hey, look, my Range Rover got stolen. Get and line, it's mate. just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, bloody hell, you shouldn't get a Range Rover, right? Well, <laughs> Why no, are you driving a Range Rover? The police yeah. are actually following a Range Rover and it's leaving their area and they had to turn around and say, sorry, this is not our area, we can't cover it, so we have to leave this car. So they found the stolen car in one area? Yeah, it's being driven through and it's, it's leaving one borough going into another. So this and is out of our remit now. That borough, yeah. at the end of that borough and said, all I right, I thought that only later. happened in movies. Oh, <laughs> this is real life. So, I mean, look, you can understand why um, a lot of people are saying that actually, do they even care anymore? Or, or it could be the fact that do they even have the resources yeah. to um, to chase these up because it's happening happening so frequently. Like you said, look at the stats; it's crazy, three hundred percent up on Ferrari. Yeah, right. And if you look at the amount of re- recoveries of vehicles, then again, two years ago, um, what was it twenty eight percent of vehicles were recovered? overall and that includes vehicles with trackers of all different brands in as well last year that was down to 22 percent so you know the chances of it coming back are relatively small but you're you're absolutely right in terms of the resource okay well look that's been very insightful thank you mark for coming down and uh enlightening us with um (laughs) how tracker is the number one tracking device for your vehicle um i think it just goes without saying right if you've got a, a car that is probably like over the value of like thirty thousand pounds, would you say thirty five thousand pounds? Well, I mean, really, you know, if, even if it's we sell a lot through various dealer groups and so forth, and and they may go on vehicles from ten thousand pounds upwards. Oh wow! Yeah. If you're paying ten thousand pounds for a vehicle or or anything, that's still the second most still expensive a lot of thing money. you've bought. Mm. Yeah. You know, be beside your flat or your house if you if you have exactly one. So, yeah um but yeah certainly twenty thirty thousand pounds especially with what's happened in that kind of second hand car market and your ability to replace the same vehicle for the same amount of money mm-hmm. then i think more and more people are looking to get that feeling of security in their vehicles oh, perfect so look at the end of the day you, if, if a car means something to you it could be 20 grand 25 grand or 250 grand right at the end of the day um this is one way you can safeguard yourself to ensure that if it does get nicked that you you'll be able to get it back 97 percent success rate and for, for the sake of two or three percent of the value of the vehicle it's, it's a no-brainer right a, if that, yeah. No brainer. If that, yeah, yeah. and really yes. speaking the 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 uh, way you deal with the theft is really simple you you get one of these in, installed on your car you let the person steal it and you're kind of you have that peace of mind knowing you okay. go to bed and wake up the next morning and it's back on your drive it's back on your driveway <laughs> right <laughs> well uh, the good thing like i mentioned yes. before was that we're installing them um if any of our viewers slash customers want to get this installed on their car they can use the gve code which is gve10 which gives them 10 percent off um and they can use the link that we're going to put within this video as well uh, it doesn't have to be installed by us it can be installed at any of your uh, accredited installers around the country but also if you do want get installed by us you just give us a call we'll give you a discount as well um so no thank you once again it was very insightful and thanks boys um hope thank you, you guys like this podcast uh if you do please like subscribe and share and until next time see you later